And I want to thank everyone who's been joining us this morning. And uh, it was actually a, a good surprise for me, too. I was not expecting both uh, uh, Tim and Tom to show up this morning. That is uh, Sheriff Tom Carter, of course, and uh, Tim Miller, captain from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. And I uh, had an opportunity on two very big topics to touch base with them, uh, one being what's going on in Oregon, and number two, uh, what was actually taking place with the investigation into the dead baby that was found a couple of weeks ago on Blue Lakes Boulevard here in Twin Falls by one of the deputies. And as they pointed out, uh, the baby's funeral is 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. So we'll be bringing you some more details about that too as well. I think I'll have to mention that again tomorrow. It would be nice to see a huge community turnout. Uh, to uh, to give a send off uh, to that uh, to that child, nine oh eight. Bill Colley with you on top story on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX and News Radio thirteen ten dot com twenty nine. Uh, the one thing I think you have to take away from that because people are going to say, well, I thought I heard them say this and I thought I heard them say that. They support the ranchers and they do believe that things might be a little heavy handed in Oregon right now. On the other hand, they are also forced to enforce well, that is enforce the laws. So uh, that's where your constitutional sheriff uh, has to uh, has to, st- and and I think what they're trying to say is they're giving a little bit more sympathy to the sheriff in Oregon than I had been giving him, in the sense that he has not let this thing turn into some sort of bloodbath, and maybe that's a new way to look at it. I I I, I will point out too as well, and I mentioned it very quickly in the last half hour. Where's the media now on this story? It's almost as if it dropped off the face of the earth. For a week, there were satellite trucks ringing that whole Milder Wildlife Refuge, at least down by the compound, where the people are sitting and, and, and essentially just killing time, waiting for something to happen in all of this. And when the media goes away, does the issue go away as well? Because I think we have to credit Ammon Bundy and his associates for what they've done. But on the other hand, they brought attention to the issue, and now two weeks in, if the media does walk away and there's nothing new to talk about, does the public forget about it? And did Dwight and Steve Hammond then rot in federal prison and not get a hearing at any point? As I've said earlier, what needs to happen is the president of the United States should pardon those two men. And if that happens and you want a peaceful resolution to this situation, then I think Bundy and his associates go home after the pardon and anything else afterward can be negotiated when it comes to land and land use. We have a caller with us. You're up next. You're on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Good morning. Uh, yeah. Um, what that gets me is that the sheriff said that he's got to obey if, if this federal nonsense. But the thing is, uh, an increment of law is always the best friend of a dictator. Um, you know, if the law it actually takes away everybody's freedoms, it's not a law. It's a violation of the Constitution. He doesn't have to obey that. And, and the way they were talking, they sounded so milk toast. I wouldn't want these guys wanting to protect my back. I mean, they're will, I mean, they're making excuses for the government. We want people that actually act like men. Well, I think that and I'll give credit to one thing they pointed out and that's the credit they gave to the sheriff in Oregon who I did not have a very high opinion of, but at the moment he's kept the federal government out of this and at bay at the airport in Burns. And by doing so, avoided what could be a very nasty situation. Well, what would impress me is if he arrested those agents who arrested those farmers. That would impress me. That would be quite a, a stretch. Uh, and, it, you know, it could be career ready. Well, it's it could be. being a man. It is Arrest being a man. Hold on, hold on. It, I'm telling you this. He could do that, and then there would be an effort to remove him. Is there enough political courage in a sheriff? To actually do that. The sheriff, how about the people who are demanding stuff like that? We would actually like to see this kind of stuff happen. And you know what? If you could surround, put it this way, if the sheriff would do that and it would be threaten his career, then the public would also have to rally behind him. And that means the public would have to throw up a cordon around him to protect him. Is the public willing to do that in large numbers? If, yes, it sounds like they're getting ready to, to stand up for themselves for the first time. They, the reason why they didn't in the first place is because the sheriff acted like a milk toast wiener. But this on, weekend, want- this weekend, this weekend, the Seahawks are playing uh, playing in uh, Carolina, and I'm going to tell you, you right now, most that. people would rather be watching the football game than go out and stand up for the local sheriff or the ranchers. That's I'm sorry, but that's how it works. There's a good TV program on tonight. Do you think that people are really going to go out and put their own lives 
or futures on the line? In the, I don't believe it. I think that that's why that group Idaho 3%, it's, it, 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 that's a historical reference to 3% of the Americans at the time getting involved in the American Revolution. The other 97% may have said, well, yeah, we support you, but gosh, I'm going down to the tavern tonight, and I'm going to meet my buddies and throw darts. Thank you much for the input. You're up next. You're on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. Hello. Um, I just wanted to comment on the Bundy situation down there. Sure. Go ahead. You're on the air. Oh, okay. Um, I kind of agree with them in the fact that this is the, oh, it's sad, but it's the only way they can get the message out that, you know, sometimes the federal government does overstep. And I think the sheriff down there is doing a good job, but let's face it, the FBI, these guys had to know when they went in there and did this, you're going to jail. I, I mean, do they wish... were smart. They went in when it was closed. They didn't do anything really harmful. They're not destroying stuff. But you're going to jail. I do wish. This... I do wish, though, that the sheriff in 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 uh, in in that part of the uh, in Oregon, I wish yeah. he had um, what he had, Harney County. I wish what he had done at least has his rhetoric in the beginning was a little nasty toward these guys. Number one, I think the sheriff could have been nicer about it, saying, you know what. I think they've got a legitimate point. Um, and and I, I, I've been reading this in media. I saw an editorial on the uh, editorial page of the Wall Street Journal where the writer said something to the effect of, well, well their tactics are wrong, uh, but they, the, the cause is good. So their tactics in order to do this, what were the, it's called civil disobedience. They may know they're going to go to prison themselves. They're doing it to bring attention. That's sacrifice. And our last caller was talking about how, well, the sheriff should go in there and arrest the federal agents who took the Hammonds away. All right, then the sheriff does that. Then someone comes in and arrests the sheriff. Who then yeah, backs up the that's sheriff? That's going to get a spiral that you can't stop. That isn't Right. And the, I guess kind of the sad thing is, is it took something like this to go so blatant to get this into the national news of the point of, hey, look, we're being treated poorly here. What the government did was not right. And and it takes something like this extreme to do it. And I'm going to tell you another thing. I've got a lot of people who call the radio show or they go online and they talk really tough about, we're going to give the government the what for. Well, the government has drones and listening devices and tanks and airplanes and missiles. At some point, all right, you yourself can talk really tough. But I'm telling you right now, most people are much more comfortable watching a football game or their favorite TV program or hanging out with their friends. And they're not. Believe me, this notion when you call up and you get your muscles on about all of this, and I'm not criticizing you, but I'm saying there are some people out there you got to realize you may think you're in the majority, but push comes to shove and you turn around and find no one behind you, you're going to be mightily lonely. You're exactly right. And I think that's probably what the Bundys are looking at right now, their message. And kind of through the media, it's always heavily armed. They're armed. Well, yeah, they're armed, but they're not threatening. They're not invoking violence. They're not, they're just trying to say, hey, look, this is what's going on in the government, and we want people to understand it. And everybody else, it seems, is going, well, go in there, shoot them up, throw them out, let's, have, let's just take tanks in, bomb them. And I'm going, what, what are you talking about? They have a legitimate beef. I thank you much for the call. America right now, despite the difficulty we're having with government and the rise of people like Donald Trump who are channeling a lot of our disgust with government, and to a lesser extent, Ted Cruz and probably even uh, the socialist Bernie Sanders, Americans aren't ready yet to, to go out and have a second American revolution. I'm telling you that right now. They'd have to be a lot colder and a lot hungrier before that's going to happen. And we can all sit here and say it's terrible what's happening over there in Oregon, and you can take your different positions on it, but I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. We're not going to, the people who think that, well, we've got to overthrow the government and start again, you and whose army? It's 916. We have another caller. You're up next on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Good morning, Bill. You know, I don't, I don't envy the police department or anybody in any way, shape, or form. It's hard to put yourself in between a rock and a hard place because no matter what choice you make, it's going to be wrong in somebody's eyes. I think the biggest problem, we've talked about this over and over, why doesn't the federal government be held up to the same standards as we are? Because we are the government. 
So why is it a double standard? And why is these people being held in double jeopardy? They've already been charged once, and then 10 years later, they get charged again. We need why? people. We need people in charge who, and, and, and they've got to be big enough to have the bully pulpit. Maybe it's Trump. I doubt it. But maybe it's maybe it's someone of that big personality who's, who's going to say, and then can drag members of the House and Senate along in eliminating a lot of these departments, the IRS, the BLM, uh, the Department of Education, Department of Energy. Get rid of those, save us some money, and stop the oppression of regular Americans. Because regular Americans just don't have the wherewithal, oh, we say we do, but even the three percent, as the caller pointed out, they went over there to try to help negotiate. But all they really did was got some media time, and that helped spread the story. But then again, media—if media doesn't like you, there's no benefit to it. And, and you're absolutely right, Bill. You know, hey, the only way anything will ever change is if we unite as people of the government and demand a change. But like you said, you know. A, a, a night at the tavern or, or, or a football game is much more important than anything else. Thank you much for the telephone call. It's 918. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. If you're thinking outright revolt in this country, there are a few things that would have to happen before that would come down. Number one, a second Great Depression, something that is a big enough economic calamity along those lines, and it doesn't necessarily guarantee things will get better on the other side. Uh, number two, if you have the establishment in these Republican and Democrat parties that try to squash these insurgent campaigns, whether it be Trump or Ted Cruz uh, or, or, or Rand Paul, I guess he's been pretty well squashed at this point. If you have that effort, I'm telling you right now, then people might rise up. But it's not going to happen in 2016. It's not going to happen in 2018. It would have to be some long-lasting s- situation where people finally felt that they had been so long abandoned by the government and that they had the government's heel in their faces for so long, then they might rise up. But again, you're also going to have access to media. you got to have that. And if the cameras suddenly don't show up and the microphones don't show up and the Internet goes down because somebody's got a kill switch somewhere, I'm telling you, you know, we have to, the, the solution is going to have to be somebody we can find who has a big enough personality to move the inertia and then that person has to figure out how to survive. Because I'll tell you right now, there are some people in the establishment who already got designs on how they could remove someone. Uh, one big personality, and this happened it happened in Mexico. A woman a couple of weeks ago got elected mayor of a, a suburb of Mexico City. Well, maybe it's about 40 miles, but it, that's a heavily populated area. And she said, I'm going to take on the drug lords. Her first day on the job, she was shot and killed. That's what worries me, the people who are willing to stand up and really finally might be able to make a change. And then what? If that big personality is gone, people need leaders, then they all fade away and watch the football game again. I, uh, I was thinking, too, uh, about conversations about what sheriffs should be doing in this situation. And during the break, I had a couple of more thoughts on it. I'll share that in a moment. I do want to remind you, if you're having difficulty hearing this program, It may not be your radio. It may be your ears. And you need to give a call to Dr. Christine Pickup. She's a doctor of audiology. It's called Mount Harrison Audiology. It's located in Rupert, back near the mountain. That's why it gets the name. 1218 9th Street, unit number 2 in Rupert. Telephone number 208-312-0957. Online, mountharrisonaudiology.com. Hearing loss and dementia are linked. Hearing loss becomes a great burden on the brain as you have to expend more time and energy to decipher what others are saying to you. Treating hearing loss reduces the strain and makes hearing more natural. Keep your brain healthy by taking care of your hearing. It's 924. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. 28. Uh, cooled off a few minutes, uh, a few degrees since we've actually gone on air, but we'll bounce back before the end of the day. Think about Sheriff Joe Arpaio down in uh, Arizona, Maricopa County. He's often defied the federal government. But the courts come in, and every time he does it, the courts side with the federal government. They fine his county. His taxpayers have so far been willing to foot the bill with all of the fines and the lost revenue because the federal government has that carrot saying, well, if you do this, we'll give you this stack of money. And if you don't do it, we'll take the money away. So, so far, his people have been willing to back him. But it's cost them a great deal. 
they, they have to obviously come up with the money elsewhere if they don't get the, the federal carrot coming and being dangled in front of them. The other part of this is my former sheriff uh, from my county in Delaware, a fellow by the name of Jeff Christopher, uh, was uh, the award winner one year. He, was, he, he won the Constitutional Sheriff's Association, which Tom Carter is also a member of. Jeff got the award as their sheriff of the year, and he had said, he had actually said, if the federal government tried to interfere with certain activities in his county, he would simply throw up roadblocks. But people loved him, and he was a Republican. Guess what happened? The Republican Party establishment found an establishment candidate through all of its weight and its, especially this, money behind him. And then they said he's going to cost your taxpayers all sorts of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions if he keeps this up. And you know what? He lost a primary, and he's no longer the sheriff. So you got to realize when you say, oh, the sheriff better go out there and sock someone right in the nose, well, you better be behind him like the people are with Joe Arpaio because other guys have tried it, and they're out of a job. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on KLIX. Well, just like the response by Nikki Haley, governor of South Carolina, to the uh, president's State of the Union, it was it was weak and partisan, and it was against the people. And it, it just seemed to me that, you know, you when she first got elected, she was swept in by the Tea Party revolution, so to speak, in 2010. And she seems to have lost, forgot where she came from. Okay, that being said, you know, when we want to overthrow the government, it's not going to happen because there's no way we're going to win with guns and blood. We've got to care. I travel a lot sometimes, and yesterday I was in Salt Lake, and all anybody could talk to me about was the lottery. And I said, well, you know what you ought to care about is the fact that your president lies to you every week, and you're, you're being you know, controlled and, and coerced by this government. You need to start fighting back as a citizen of this country, and I'll hang up. Hey, thank you. Uh, Nikki Haley... Still is, is is considered to be by her her voters, as I was mentioning in the the early part of the program today. Her approval rating in South Carolina is astronomical. Why? Well, because she's she's backed off on regulation and taxes, and she's done all the boilerplate stuff a good conservative governor does. It's the fact that Nikki Haley, speaking of being uh, dangled up the prize, somebody said to her, mm, "Nikki Haley, you'd be a good vice president, and you don't have to do any work for it other than give this speech." That's what Nikki Haley made her compromise on. So now she, according to some pundits, she is the leading candidate to be the vice presidential nominee of the Republican Party because she did the party's bidding in the very dull speech the other night. Despite that, she's been a very successful governor in South Carolina. You may object to the fact that she took down the Confederate flag, but most of the people in South Carolina apparently got over that quickly. 928, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Because if she's she's putting money back in their pockets, okay, they'll accept that to some degree. Uh, Thirty one right now. You're listening to Top Story on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX and News Radio thirteen ten dot com. So how do you win against a government that continually oppresses its people? Well, uh, got to start by trying to win the media narrative. And right now, our side doesn't, and we haven't been doing it for decades. I think we're all well aware of that. Just look at how the, the, the this whole thing in Oregon has been portrayed. No one's talking really about uh, about you know the efforts and the hard work ranchers do. It's all about ah greedy people uh, ruin the land. Uh, gun 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 gun. Bad 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 bad. And number two, even if you do win the media narrative, what happens if the government comes along, as I said earlier, and pulls the plug on the media? And there are all sorts of tricks we've got to deal with here. And I don't know, but we got to start once more with winning that narrative. And the only way you do that is. You know, you, you, you vote with your feet. You reward the people who follow your your conscience. And then when it comes to the other guys who continually, you know, trample all over our American values, ignore them. Don't buy their product. Don't watch their product. Don't listen to their product. Governor Butch Otter is scheduled to join us in 10 minutes. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. It's 29, coming up on 930. Thank you for joining us this morning.